This is the 2022 Super League Pod Preview and Predictions Show. We're back, so get strapped in and bring it on. Hello listeners, welcome to 2022, welcome to episode 326 of the Super League Pod. You thought you've had a month of 2022, but it's only just starting now as we are back with our season preview and predictions show. Um, I am your host, Mark. I'm joined by fellow hosts, Alan and David. Sarah double booked us, cheek of it. Um, <laughs> she, she hasn't quite got used to the shift to a Tuesday recording slot yet for SLP. But um, Alan, David, welcome back along. Hello, everybody. Hi, guys, and uh, nice to be back, Mark. Yep. Uh, one person who isn't back this year with us is Tim G. He's put the microphone down for for a little while, but I'm sure we'll catch up with him in good time. In any case, um, we. We'll give a mention to our best friends over at Rob's Toy Shop as well, because they still support the show. Uh, find a wide range of toys, gifts, rugby league birthday cards, and more at Rob's Toy Shop on eBay. Visit stores.ebay.co.uk forward slash Rob's Toy Shop. And on any orders over £5, you can earn 5% cash back, and also 1% of your order value will go to SLP by putting SLP discount at checkout. Um, what I think we should do, guys, because it's a new year, and whilst it's episode 326 for some people this might be episode one uh hopefully there's some new people on board if you're not a new person on board we love having you around still but try and get more people on board too by make sure you share this episode in all your social media groups and retweets and shares and all of that sort of stuff would be great please any forums you're on any facebook groups let people know to get around slp because we are the fan podcast for the super league um and we probably should do a bit of a brief reintroduction slash introduction guys so um we're gonna do a bit of a round table but we'll cover sarah first who's missing now sarah's our resident hull fc fan and rugby league mum she she has those angles covered um for us so then we'll move slightly west where things are best but still on the wrong side of the pennines for alan (laughs) why don't you tell the people a little bit about yourself alan it's it's the right side of the pennines in in both aspects um yeah so alan a long-suffering bradford fan uh my 30th year this year unbelievably um so yeah so being around through the good the bad and the frankly disgusting um so yeah so yeah kind of long suffering kind of you know question my sanity on more than one occasion but uh but i would still call myself a bradford fan excellent stuff moving a bit further across still uh onto the right side of the pennines but in the wrong part of it we've got david <laughs> not only the right side of the pennines but the right side of billings lump mark <laughs> So, uh, hi, my name's uh, Dave, David Powell. Uh, I am a uh, a very long supporting Saints fan, so 51 years, Alan. That's more than half a century of supporting the Saints. But some of it quite good, uh, most recently quite good, uh, but some very, very long stretches of it not being so very good and watching Mark's team give us a good hiding every uh, once or twice a year. So uh, it's nice to be uh, nice to be in a good place for a change and I've been supporting football and rugby and, and indeed many sports for so long. I know it's uh, you have to make the, the best of the good times because the bad times are just around the corner. Let's yes, hope let, they are around the corner for you, David. Let, let, You've had three years. It's a very, very, very long bend, Mark. That's all I can <laughs> we, we basically had to bring you on as a permanent feature because you were here at so many of our episodes where we talked about <laughs> the people who'd won the trophies. <laughs> 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 um, and I'm Mark, and I'm a Wigan Warriors fan, so that's hence the uh, the other side of things to David. Um, I've been around SLP since it started. This is now our... I haven't even counted it up. I think it's our ninth. <laughs> is it our ninth year? Uh, uh, 
I think. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I just counted it up, yeah. Yeah. Fingers and toes and everything. Yeah. So the ninth season, we're covering the fans' eyes view on Rugby League. What, what we do here at SLP, for those who don't know, is each week we come with reviews of the matches from the fans eyes view so we'll do it we'll talk a little bit about stats a little bit about any kind of big news stories or that sort of stuff around the game as well and throw in our our views on that but really the mainstay is we get you guys to hit us up each week on our google forms that you'll find links to on facebook uh, our facebook page and our twitter feeds if you click on a link there you drop a view in for us on any any and all rugby league action that you've seen either your team or a team you hate or just a game you've enjoyed or or endured or what have you and we talk about those and we use your fan views as the focal point for recapping the previous week's rugby league action but this isn't about um recapping this is about predicting so what what we've been doing is getting all the results together from the fan predictions that you guys have been giving us over the last month or so um and we'll be giving our own predictions too now as well as sharing what you guys think. Uh, we will do a brief team-by-team team Super League preview too. Um, we'll co- What we'll do is we'll cover it in reverse order of where the average fan prediction sees each team finishing uh, out of the 12 Super League teams. So that kind of re- reveals the order of things as we go. Um, we will throw something up on superleaguepod.com, the, the SLP blog, with a, a little bit more of a rounded view of all of the ins and outs at each club, all of the squad lists for each club, so they'll all be in one place for you. And I'll, you know, I'll throw some of my uh, views on there that I might not get to in this episode. But um, but yeah, that's that's how we'll be getting into this episode. We'll start with the predictions for all of the big trophies. We'll then do the team by team section on focusing on the super league and then we'll do what we like to and um apologize for, for anyone who's not prepared for this but they'll we'll then do our say what predictions <laughs> for things that are maybe slightly more bonkers that people think might happen this year and uh, yes we did get about seven in seven or eight in that that say it might be warrington's year as the as the most crazy thing people can think might happen in 2022 um but we'll get to all of those later on um we'll give you a little bit of a heads up as well at the end of the show about what this year looks like for slp too because there's there's a couple of changes that we're making tuesday regular recording slot being one of them but um that's that's the introduction out of the way um welcome back everyone and we're now going to get into our predictions First up, guys, let's start with the first major trophy that will be handed out back in May now uh, in 2022, but not at Wembley for one year only. But it's still the Challenge Cup, so it's still important. Um, What I think we'll do is we'll give out our predictions first. So Hull FC fan Sarah, like we say, not here to tell us why she thinks Hull FC will win the Challenge Cup this year, (laughs) but she's gone for her own side um actually as 46 percent of people voting did 46 percent of people picked their own club to win the cup this year um and in fact the only people who picked hull kr were hull kr fans or spoof hull kr fans which was a uh, <laughs> interesting to see but um alan who who have you got up for the cup this year um i've gone for leeds and i feel like i've said leeds for the last three or four years um, I kind of I, I, I t- try to pick somebody who is, you know, probably in the top half of the table, but I probably don't. I try not to pick the same winner of the grand final and the Challenge Cup. So honestly, that was my rationale for picking Leeds. No particular, um, no love for them, obviously, but <laughs> uh, but but generally speaking, I, I you know I, I try to pick a team that's a bit different. So yeah, I went for Leeds. But you. Leeds are quite a, a quite a popular like fashionable side this year lots of the predictions you read for like Super League and stuff when you read all the magazines and, and all that business have them in the top three some of them so you know you, you, everyone seems to be fancying Leeds to some extent this year is, is there anything particularly about Leeds that made you pick them over say some of the other clubs that haven't won the Super League in the last couple of years but are you know, a, a, a contender? Not 
Not particularly. They, they do have big match winning pedigree, um, unlike some other teams around that. So that that helps. Um, they're usually there or thereabouts, and yeah, I just didn't want to pick Saints for everything, so so I went Leeds. Fair enough, David. That might not have been a problem for you. So who have you gone not for? Fr- yeah, surprisingly, I've gone for Saints uh, to win the Challenge Cup again uh, this year to go back to back on the Challenge Cup. Uh, I'm one of those fans that always likes to be optimistic. I should be, if I wasn't a Saints fan, I'd probably be a Warrington fan, wouldn't I? With uh, always thinking it was going to be our year. So I'm always optimistic at this time of year. It's a bright, fresh start to the season. Um, quite genuinely, though, I think Saints look strong again this year. Um, there are, I think Leeds have strengthened. I think Alan, I think that the halfback partnership that Leeds have got this year looks. Uh, good I think Uh, and they've added sensibly I think to the pack which I think needed a little bit more strength in it so I think Leeds will be challenging for this as well and uh, if I hadn't picked Saints I'd have probably picked Catalan because I think they are also looking really strong but if anything I know we've lost Coop but I I think if anything Saints look a little bit stronger this year than last Um, we won it last year I think think we could we should be competing for this one again i've i've gone left field a little bit with my choice for the challenge cup i i I really want the stranglehold even though one of my clubs is one of them with that grip around all the trophies of of, you know in, in the super league era um i want it to be broken to an extent and i just don't see it happening in the super league over the over the long course unfortunately but I do see the cup where, you know, on anyone's day, it's only a one-game thing, isn't it, really, it, each time. And so some of those big clubs, St. Helens, um, you know, Warrington, Leeds, Catalans, Wigan, could fall foul of a, of a bad day. And um, and so I'm going for Huddersfield Giants this year <laughs> in the Challenge Cup. I, I do... I look at their score squad and what's happened this year there has been a bit of a turnover but i think it's all been and la- like what for like 15 months 16 months now and in, in, when you talk about huddersfield and you talk about the project because that seems to be how how it gets talked about with ian watson i think he's brought people in that buy in that he knows will buy into the project better than the people he's getting rid of i think it's going to be a team all going in the same direction this year and I think they'll be better for that and I think they're a good side and when it comes to the cup it'll be done by the end of May you might not have had as many serious injuries that might derail something in that period um, so yeah Huddersfield is, is my tip uh, per- perfectly fair that Mark the only thing I would remind you of is every time we tipped Huddersfield last year they lost no matter what the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or every time we picked against them, they won. They just screwed yeah. up predictions exactly. really last year. Yeah. So, so unpredictable last year. Well, in terms of the um, the wider SLP vote in public, uh, the top three that they came up with might surprise a few people. In third place with 10% of picks, it was Castleford Tigers. Uh, in second place with 22% of the picks, it was the reigning cup holders, St. Helens. But the people who, the team that people most thought might win the Challenge Cup this year, with 28% of the votes, so more than a quarter of the people have picked this side to win the Challenge Cup in 2022, it's Leeds Rhinos. Interesting. 2019 winners, but you have to do a bit more this year than you had to last year and the year before, don't you, to win the Cup? Um <laughs> Yeah, Warrington, Wigan, they were just outside the top three. Hull FC, Hull KR, Catalan, Huddersfield. They all got multiple picks. Salford got one pick as well. So that means just Toulouse and Wakefield didn't get picks out of the Super League sides. Uh, but any reaction to to that, guys? Well, can I, can I just check? With, with Rob's toy shop sponsoring the show, does Rob get, like, 150 votes? <laughs> <laughs> um, more than half of the votes for Castleford Tigers were by Castleford what? Tigers fans. So whilst 46% <laughs> of people picked their own club to win the cup, I think it was 70% or 80% of Castleford Tigers fans <laughs> picked themselves to win the cup. So that might have had an influence there. Um, yeah. But, but yeah. 
It, it, I always think with a cup, it's it's one of those competitions where, as you say, if it's your own club, you always fancy your chances. You know what I mean? Even if you're, you know, even if you're not going to win it, you think, oh, we could have a good cup run. Yeah. And whatever. And and uh, yeah, it's just. I-